Hello everyone, welcome back to Rotor Dynamics 101. Today we'll explore rotor dynamic instability. Rotor dynamic instability is a self-excited vibration phenomenon in rotating machinery. Unlike imbalance or misalignment, instability arises from within rotor bearing seal system itself. The machine supplies energy into certain vibration modes if this energy input exceeds the system's natural damping, the vibration grows on its own until it reaches destructive levels or forces shut down. Now, let's talk about how rotor instability actually appears in machines. The most common signature is something called subsynchronous forward whirl. This means the rotor starts to whirl at a frequency below its running speed. This unstable whirl is usually tied to the first bending mode of the rotor, or sometimes another nearby natural frequency. It does not happen at all speeds. It typically starts once the rotor passes a certain point. We call this instability threshold or the onset speed of instability. Above this speed, the system begins to feed energy into the whirl motion and vibration amplitude starts to grow rapidly. Now, what drives this unstable behavior? Here are major contributors. Rotor instability can be caused by fluid film bearing, seal forces, impeller and flow interactions, and internal friction. Let's first look at the rotor dynamic instability due to fluid film bearing. Fluid film bearings do more than just support the rotor. As the shaft moves inside the oil film, the film develops pressure distributions. Normally, those pressures create restoring forces that push the shaft back towards the center. That's the stabilizing effect we want. But in some machine operating conditions and some bearing geometries, the pressure field becomes skewed. So instead of lining up with the displacement, the reaction force from the bearing can be shifted about 90 degrees out of phase. This is what we called cross-coupled stiffness. Rather than damping vibration, the bearing is actually feeding energy into a whirl motion. And here's the danger. If those cross-coupled forces are stronger than the rotor system's natural damping, the machine develops a self-excited, subsynchronous whirl. In other words, instability. Instability is a concern with the fluid film bearings, which is why many aircraft engines mainly use ball bearings to avoid large vibration problems associated with oil effect. However, ball bearings provide very little damping on their own. To address this, engineers incorporate squeeze film dampers into the support system, adding the additional damping to control vibration in aircraft engines. Squeeze film dampers surrounding the outer diameter of the ball bearing with a thin oil film that provides extra damping, absorbing vibration energy, in particular, 1x vibration. Here's an example of a squeeze film damper implemented into the outer diameter of a tilting pad bearing housing. Oil is supplied through a narrow clearance, and as the housing vibrates, the squeeze film action generates additional damping. One way to fight instability is through bearing design. Tilting pad journal bearings are very effective because their pads pivot, keeping the pressure field symmetric and reducing cross-coupled stiffness. Offset journal bearings are another option. By shifting the shaft centerline, they also cut down on destabilizing forces. These designs make the bearing itself more stable. Instability can also be managed by controlling the operating conditions. Higher bearing loads generally improve stability, while lightly loaded bearings are more prone to whirl motion. Oil viscosity and supply pressure also matter. 
proper selection ensures a more stable oil film. Also, stability isn't just about the bearing itself. It's about the whole rotor bearing seal system. Engineers use stability analysis to make sure the rotor's first critical speed and damping are adequate. If the analysis shows instability risk, changes can be made to seals, support structures, or bearing geometry before the machine is built. Let's return to the potential drivers of rotor dynamic instability. This time, we will focus on seal forces, in particular, labyrinths, seals, which are well-known contributors to unstable behavior. To begin with, seals are essential in gas and steam turbines, compressors, and pumps. Their primary role is to limit leakage, controlling the flow of the fluid from high-pressure region to low-pressure regions, reducing leakage, directly improves the overall efficiency of the machine. Several seal designs are used in industry, including labyrinths seals, pocket damper seals, hole pattern seals, and many others. But it's important to note that the seals are not just passive leakage control device. They also interact dynamically with the rotor. And in some cases, this interaction can actually destabilize the system. As fluid leaks through the seal, pressure variations build up. The problem is that these forces don't push directly back against displacement. Instead, they act tangentially, creating what we call cross-couple stiffness. When rotor starts to whirl, seal clearances change around the circumference. On the closing side of the whirl, pressure increases. On the opening side, pressure decreases. The net effect is a force that acts nearly 90 degrees out of phase with motion, feeding energy into the whirl. These destabilizing forces scale with pressure difference across the seal and with shaft speed at low pressure drops across the seals or low speeds, the generation of cross-couple stiffness is small. But in high pressure, high speed machine, in certain compressors and turbine designs, the destabilizing forces can dominate the dynamics. To combat this, more than machines use advanced seal designs, honeycomb seals, Hole pattern seals and swirl brakes are all methods to reduce cross-couple stiffness and restore stability. That is all for today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.